I got pregnant with a child of a married man and ran away when he wanted me to delete a fetus, but now three years later, he's found me and wants to play happy family. Posted by you slash free underscore river underscore 3388. I, 26F, had an affair with a married man, 42M, a few years ago. I had no clue he was married when we first met and hooked up. I obviously looked him up on social media, and while he did have photos of his kids on there, there was absolutely no mention or photos of a wife at all. I found out that he was married about a month after we first got together, but he told me it was just a marriage on paper and that they basically lived separate lives and agreed to remain married for practical purposes until the kids were older. They owned the business, which he really ran, and he was just financially involved in it. I knew at the time that I probably shouldn't believe him, but I convinced myself it was true. I was in my early 20s, so attracted to him, and I guess almost infatuated with him. He made me feel so good. I know now that I should have ended it immediately, but I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. I was addicted to all the attention he gave me, the great segs, the places he'd take me. I felt special. I was so naive. I got pregnant about a year into seeing him. I had always been so careful about preventing pregnancy, but during my relationship with him, I took stupid risks. I was so high in lust with this guy, it's embarrassing. The things he'd ask me to do, I'd say yes to almost anything, even when I knew it was a bad idea. I was in love with him, or at least I thought I was. I hadn't intentionally wanted to get pregnant. I would, of course, dream about being his wife and having a family, but I knew that wouldn't be a possibility while he had this arrangement with his actual wife. I didn't get pregnant on purpose with any intention of him leaving her for me, even if I wished that we could be a real, normal couple. I was surprised by how excited I was to be pregnant with his baby. I wanted that baby once I found out I was pregnant. The thought of carrying the baby of the man I loved was so special to me, but I knew he probably wouldn't feel the same. I told him I was pregnant, and he told me I couldn't keep the baby. I expected his reaction, but I was devastated, and it hurt me to my core that he didn't feel the same way I did. He offered to pay, make a whole weekend of it somewhere exciting, WTF, and buy me something special if I'd just please get rid of the baby. He explained that he didn't want any more kids, and that he couldn't openly be a father to another child when he and his wife were still pretending to be happily married to the outside world. I agreed to do what he wanted, and we made plans for him to pick me up and find somewhere out of town to get it done. I was all packed the night he was supposed to pick me up, but I started to feel really scared and unsafe about the whole situation. I took my bag and checked myself into a hotel to hide because I couldn't go with him. I texted him, saying I promised never to contact him again, never to name him as the father or go after child support if he'd promised to leave me alone. At first, he tried to sweet talk me into doing what he wanted. When I didn't cave in, he said some very nasty things to me and that I'd better never contact him again or show up at his door. I have a two-year-old now. At times, it's been difficult, but overall, we are thriving as best we can. I have kept my word about not naming him as the father or requesting child support. His wife contacted me on social media. Well, she's his ex-wife now. She wants to talk to me. She found out about me and told me that she divorced him six months ago. She wants her children to know their sibling and for my child to know his siblings. That's weird to me. I haven't responded to her yet. I am unsure how to approach this. How do I respond to this? I wonder if I'm being selfish by not exploring the option for my child to know his siblings if she's being genuine about that. If I were married and my husband fathered a child outside of our marriage, I don't think I'd feel the same way she does. First update three weeks later. I made a post about this three weeks ago, and things have only gotten stranger. Essentially, I had an affair with a married man a few years ago. I promised this man that I wouldn't expose our affair, formally identify him as the father, or request child support. I did that because he was becoming very nasty about the whole situation, and I felt that due to the mess I had created and how I felt by the end of it, a clean break with no involvement from him would be the best thing for everyone. I moved back to where my family is, hundreds of miles from where he and his family live. About a month ago, his ex-wife reached out to me via social media, claiming they had been divorced for six months, and that she wanted our children to be able to know each other. Now, their kids are teenagers, so I didn't really think they'd want anything to do with the toddler and the woman their father had an affair with. It seemed odd to me. After posting here, I sort of decided that I wouldn't respond to her. I'd just ignore it. She only sent me the one message, so it wasn't as if she was badgering me about talking or meeting. On Friday night, I decided to message her. I don't really know why. I think it was really just for my sake, so I could have the chance to apologize to her. I told her that I would be more comfortable speaking with her face to face since I couldn't trust that it was really her. She said she understood. I was too nervous to meet her in person, but we did a video chat. I didn't know what to expect, if this was all a ploy just to unleash her fury on me or what. I mean, I deserve that. She wouldn't be wrong to feel that way. It was really her. She told me she discovered our affair when she found communications between the two of us after our relationship had ended. 
She told me I'm one of many women he had affairs with over the years and that she knew about someone even before he met me, but she didn't divorce him at the time. Finding out about my child was the final straw for her. I told her I was sorry for my relationship with her husband and admitted that I knew he was married. She graciously told me she forgives me and that while she initially harbored a lot of anger towards me, she ultimately blames her husband. I'm not blameless, but she chooses not to hate me, essentially. She said she couldn't have said this six months or a year ago when she first found out about me, but she has moved past that. She still has anger toward him, along with many other emotions surrounding him. She started pouring out her heart to me about their 20-plus year marriage and life together, and it was very awkward because what do I even say? Her kids know about me and my son. She says they're very mad at their father. Somehow, I don't think they're mad about the fact that he's not involved in my son's life. And why would they be mad about that? I would hate me if I were them. I told her that with my son being so little right now, I don't really feel comfortable with him meeting her kids or being involved with their family. I feel unsure about it, and it's just not something I feel needs to happen right now. Then she told me her ex-husband was in a bad accident two months ago. He's fine now, still not allowed to return to all his normal activities just yet, but he will be fine. He is probably the most physically active person I've ever met, barely ever seems to sit down, so he must be terribly annoying to be around if he's not allowed to move all the time. She told me he wants to meet my son. Apparently, she moved back in with him temporarily when he first came home from the hospital. She said the accident really shook him up, and he has been expressing a lot of regret about my son, not being involved, not providing for him. So now it's like, was everything she said just a lie, and did he somehow get her to reach out to me on his behalf? And she actually did it? It felt almost like a relief talking to her initially, but then it's like, was any of that true, or was she just trying to be his messenger? I don't even know if that part is true now. Why wouldn't he just contact me himself? I'm just feeling so uneasy about the whole thing now. Second update two months two weeks later. Since I last posted here a couple months ago, I deleted all social media. I don't know why, but the whole thing just really made me uncomfortable. Then I received a handwritten letter from him. In it, he expressed how he wanted to get to know our son, be a father to him, provide financially for him, and even asked us to come visit him. He also asked me to sign a paternity affidavit. I refused to do so. I know he is my son's father, but I'm not going to make this easy for him. After the things he said to me and the threats he made, he at least has to work for this. At that point, my parents felt we needed to meet with a lawyer. All communication from me has gone through the lawyer since then. I have never responded to him personally or directly. Now, I have a court order for paternity. I have to present my son to have a specimen taken tomorrow. I already know what it's going to say. It's not that I don't want my son to have a dad in his life. It's just the whole situation is a mess. And he lives a few states away from me. I don't know what to do. I can't really do anything. He's doing things legally. Next, I'm sure he'll petition for some form of custody or visitation. He's not married anymore, supposedly, but he's a lot more established than I am. He has considerably more financial resources. I also know he has all sorts of connections where he lives. Luckily, they don't hold as much weight here in my state, but it's still so scary to me. I feel like a bad mom. I brought my son into this world knowing it was a messy situation. I just got so comfortable with it being just the two of us, and now I don't want to give that up. Third update one month two weeks later. Around one and a half months ago, we were ordered to submit DNA samples for a paternity test. It took about five weeks to get the results, which confirmed what I already knew. But now things are stalled for another several weeks for the next step in the court process. I haven't talked to him at all during this whole thing. I didn't respond directly to his letter. I do have a lawyer, and everything is basically going through him now. Then, without any warning, he just showed up at my home last weekend. He knocked on the door like it was nothing, saying that this is his son and he doesn't want to wait another six weeks for the court to inevitably order us into some sort of custody mediation anyway, his words. He asked why I couldn't just talk to him. I told him that he made me uncomfortable and that him showing up at my house unannounced really made me uncomfortable. Honestly, I'm not sure what made me more uncomfortable, the fact that he showed up like that or the fact that I instantly felt the same attraction to him that I had when I was with him, and I didn't want to feel that at all. In some weird way, part of me felt happy to see him, and another part of me was disgusted that I was happy. He said he doesn't understand why we can't just talk about this. He's not trying to take my son away from me, he just wants to be involved in his life and help provide for him like he should have been all along. He's sorry he wasn't there when our son was born, and he's sorry he reacted the way he did when I didn't go along with his plans for the abortion. Why can't I believe that he just wants to be a dad to his kid? I guess I agree with him. Why can't I just accept that he's had a change of heart? But I can't trust myself. I can't trust my own judgment. I feel like if I easily let him into my son's life, I'll end up regretting it and be made a fool of somehow. I've already made so many mistakes when it comes to him. 
He says it's stupid of me not to try to work it out amongst ourselves first, that I'm giving too much control to the court. I don't know whether to believe that or if it's just his way of convincing me to do what he wants. I know he will get some sort of visitation and eventual custody. Maybe it would be better if we tried to come to an agreement, but he has the ability to sway me so easily. I feel so foolish when it comes to him. Nobody else has ever made me feel this way. I want my son to have a dad, and I admit it's probably selfish of me to want to keep him away. But I keep imagining having to spend weeks or months apart from my child while he's living with his dad 12 hours away, and I can't stand the thought of it. I'm just feeling sad, stupid, and defeated. Fourth update one month two weeks later. Since the last time I posted, we've had a mediation session, and he's met our son twice. At this time, he will have supervised visitation, with me present. Because he lives states away, he is required to come here to see our son. It won't be on a weekly basis due to the travel, but he will see him during two weeks of the month, two times each week, for a total of four visits a month, plus two video calls a month. This arrangement will last for six months. The next step will be for him to continue that schedule but with unsupervised visitation during which he cannot remove our son from the area for another six months. After a year, we agreed to have another mediation session to determine the next steps, with the goal, his goal, of having my son at his home for short overnights. I'm not even ready to discuss that. He's already suggesting that I can come for the first few times. I don't like the sound of it at all. We also have the option to request another mediation before the one-year mark, and something tells me he's going to push for that. I also have an order for child support. While he is in agreement with paying it, the process will have to work through the court system before it becomes official and I start receiving regular payments. In the meantime, he wrote me a large check. I was hesitant to accept it, not because I don't think my son deserves it, but because I'm worried that by accepting it, I might unknowingly do something that could hurt me legally. I'm concerned that I might be obligating myself or my son to something by accepting this check. Could he somehow use this against me? Of course, he wasn't in favor of the six-month-slash-six-month plan. While he does understand that our son shouldn't just go off with a stranger upon first meeting him, he wishes we could speed things along more quickly. But six months was what we were able to agree on. He wanted to fly us both to where he lives so he could spend a week or two getting to know our son, but I don't feel that's appropriate at this time. Maybe in a few months, or around the holidays, depending on how things are going, but right now it would be too much too soon. The initial two meetings went pretty much as I expected. My son is extremely shy. He wanted to hide behind me most of the time. When he did venture out from behind me, as soon as his dad would say anything to him, he'd scurry back behind me and just stare at his dad blankly without saying anything. He came out of his shell a little bit, but he still hasn't said a single word to his dad. He just pretends his dad isn't there and only talks to me. I will say that his dad is being patient and understanding about it. If he's frustrated, he's not showing it. He did suggest that maybe our son needs to get out more, perhaps go to daycare more or even preschool, instead of spending so much time with me and my parents. He's very delighted with how much our son looks like him and how much he favors him over me. The one thing that did bother me is that I had already told him I wanted to be very careful and mindful about how we informed our son, this little barely three-year-old boy, that this man, this complete stranger, is his dad. He said, sure, yeah. But then, at the first meeting, he introduced himself as dad. Since then, I've been trying to help my son understand, saying things like, you know how your grandpa is my daddy? Well, this guy is your daddy. It's so surreal to me that any of this is happening. I feel like I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for something to blow up in my face. Now, it's just about working on accepting our new reality. All of this change is hard and confusing for my son, and it's hard for me too. Unless he really messes up, I'm looking at eventually having to share time with my son during school breaks and holidays, with him spending that time at his dad's house, hours and hours away in another state. It won't happen tomorrow, but it will likely happen in the foreseeable future. I just hope he stays committed. If he can be a good dad to my child, then my child deserves that, no matter how sad sharing him makes me. But if he breaks my son's heart, that'll be a different story, and I won't accept that so readily. Fifth update three weeks later. It's been three weeks since I last posted and just over a month since our new visitation arrangement started. I've seen plenty of people here talking about how dumb I am, and I don't really understand. What am I doing that's so dumb? I know it was dumb to have an ongoing, year-long affair with a married man. It was stupid to put myself in a position where I could likely end up pregnant. That was in the past. What am I doing now that's so stupid? I have a lawyer. Yes, I agreed to talk to his wife one time. How was I supposed to know she was just doing his bidding? Who would have thought that was the case? It's not even like I went to meet her in person somewhere. It was just a video call. I figured I at least owed that to her, just one time, and a chance to tell her I was sorry for what I did. But ultimately, it felt off, and I protected my son by telling her I didn't think it was appropriate at this time for me and my two-year-old to travel to another state to meet her teenage kids. 
it's not as if talking to her opened the door for him to reach out to me. I was careful with what information I shared with her. It's not like I told her my address. He didn't need her to gather that info from me. My talking to her isn't what prompted him to contact me directly and establish paternity. When he reached out to me directly about wanting to be involved with our son, I didn't decide to discuss things directly with him. I got a lawyer. When he showed up at my house, I didn't let him inside. I put my son in his room so he didn't see our son or have access to him. I'm listening to my lawyer. I met with him in mediation, and I'm trying to make careful decisions for my son. There's nothing I can do to prevent him from having access to our son. If I fight it, the court will grant him access anyway. At least this way, I have a say in the arrangement. We're supposed to be using a parenting app, but since the last time I posted, he's reached out to me outside of the app. He keeps talking about us coming to visit him, but I've told him no, it's not appropriate, and it's too much too soon. He's also already started talking about changing my son's last name to his, saying, maybe in a year or so. He tries to have personal conversations with me, not always about our son. I've shut those down and referred him back to the parenting app. He thinks using the app is stupid and is only for people who can't get along. He believes it'd be better for our son if we got along and got to know each other again. He says he cares about me and what's going on in my life, or so he claims. I also didn't cash the check he gave me, I returned it. If he wants to help financially beyond the child support he's ordered to pay, he can purchase items that our son needs out of his own free will, but he isn't to give me cash or checks. My lawyer actually told me that there was nothing wrong with accepting and cashing the check, and that it wouldn't affect anything related to child support. But knowing him, I felt he might try to use the check against me in court later, and I just didn't feel comfortable about it. Sure, I would have loved to keep it, there are plenty of useful things I could have used that money for. Of course, he was upset when I returned the check via certified mail. His plan was foiled. I know he's trying to butter me up for something. I don't know exactly what, but I'm not so naive that I don't see through him now. Sixth update two months later. It's been two more months of this. Two months of him sending me messages, half about our son, half about everything else. Despite the parenting app, he just can't seem to stick to it. Every other day, I get a text directly from him, how's our son? Followed by, you good though? Do you need anything? He's also started sending packages for our son. The last one came a few days ago, a big box of toys, books, and clothes. At first, I didn't know what to think. Was this another tactic? But then I looked at the stuff he sent. It was thoughtful, age-appropriate books, clothes that actually fit and toys my son genuinely liked. It was clear he put effort into it. Or, the person he had go buy the stuff put effort into it. Hopefully not his poor ex-wife. For a moment, I could see him trying to be a father. A small part of me appreciated that. Still, I'm careful. I'm not letting my guard down. The good gestures are mixed with moments that make me feel uneasy. He mentioned again that maybe in a year or so we should talk about changing my son's last name. I don't know why he keeps bringing it up. He acts like it's no big deal, like it's just something we'll agree on eventually. On the other hand, I can't deny that having him show up consistently with child support and gifts has taken some pressure off me. He's contributing in ways that actually help. My son seems happy with the things he's sent. And while I don't want to rely on it, it's nice not to worry about buying new clothes every month. The biggest challenge right now is finding balance. How do I acknowledge the good things he's doing without letting my guard down too much? How do I protect my son from getting hurt if he loses interest or starts pushing too hard again? I'm still following my lawyer's advice, still documenting everything. But the dynamic is changing, and I'm trying to keep up. For now, I'm taking things day by day. Some moments feel peaceful, like maybe this arrangement could work. Other moments, I feel the weight of what's coming. He'll keep pushing for more time, for overnights, for a bigger role. He thinks it's unfair if I don't let him spend more time with our son during the holidays. He was practically throwing a temper tantrum about it. If I won't go to him, then he can rent an Airbnb and we can stay together. What? Why would we do that? He'll see him in December during his regularly scheduled visit. So then he called me a narcissistic, paranoid parent who just wants our son all to myself and said that I'm psychologically damaging him by not forcing him to go from zero to 60, playing happy family with a complete stranger overnight. The thing is, he has a way of saying it that makes me start to believe it, and then I worry if I'm really being that way. I don't know why he can't just act like a normal, patient, understanding adult. I'm cooperating, and I know their level of contact and time will increase gradually. That's the key word, gradually. I'm not even trying to prevent that, but I just can't agree with this idea he has of acting like he hasn't been completely uninvolved for almost three years. He's also trying to bribe me with money again. I'm not talking about the court-ordered child support and things like that. He asked me how much debt I had, and I wouldn't tell him. He kept pushing me to tell him because he would consider paying it off for me. Come on, let me help you. 
it's not help out of the kindness of his heart. He says there aren't strings attached, but I'm sure there are. He'll expect something in return, like for me to agree to change our son's name or allow some sort of custody arrangement I'm uncomfortable with. I do have a lot of debt that's a huge stressor on me, and yes, I've considered taking advantage of his offer, but not when I know my son is the price I have to pay. He told me he can find out how much debt I have if I don't tell him and that he knows a lot more about me than I realize. I hope that's just him trying to intimidate me. It sounds like it's mostly just talk, something stupid he'd say. He is sounding more and more like his old self though. So much for this accident really changing him for the better. He's really had me fooled at moments. At the end of the day, it's not money or fancy things that would go a long way with me. It's things like a genuine apology for threatening to unalive me, you know, little things like that, which go completely ignored and swept under the rug, that would mean much more to me, but only if it were completely genuine.